What's going on? Today's Dolphins news and rumors show is made possible by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com and then use code DOLPHINS at checkout. You're going to be able to save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming product out there. That's not my hand, but I will say this. The Lawnmower 3.0 is in my hand every single week, making sure that my downstairs stays absolutely perfect, crystal clean. Plus, the little light on the end helps you get in those hard-to-reach places. Rechargeable, safe in the shower. The best male grooming products out there are thanks to Manscaped. And if you are watching this on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, guess what? This video went out on our Dolphins channel yesterday. So don't be late to the party. Subscribe to that channel. You can see the link below, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. I'll also put it in the comments, and I'll put it in the description as well. You can't do a Dolphins News and Rumors video without talking about Tua, right? And let me just say this. You're all going to read the title, and Tua injury concern, the media is freaking out about nothing because Brian Flores spoke about their star quarterback who they drafted number five overall. And as soon as he said what he said, and I'll show you the quote in just a few seconds here, people freaked out. So we know that the Dolphins have been taking it slow, right? NFL people know that. Dolphin fans know that this team in general, guess what? They're doing the right things. They are taking it slow with their quarterback. They're not playing just for this year. When you draft somebody in the top five, you're playing for your future, right? And Brian, this is what he said about Tua's hip injury, and everyone, guess what, started to freak out a little bit. That is the different part of the conversation for sure, okay? Definitely part of the conversation in regards to his hip injury. We're at 10 months. It was a pretty serious injury. He looks good, though. He's healthy. He's moving around to his right and his left. But, yes, that's still part of the conversation. So the fact that he said that it was part of the conversation, people really get a little bit worried. You know what? I'm going to ask you. What is your, I guess, worry meter here on a scale from 0 to 10? How worried are you about to his injury? If you're freaking out, you can't sleep at night, it wakes you up in the morning, I want you to type 10. If you're like, dude, let's quit talking about it, I want you to type your 0. I do have another quote that came across here about the quarterback situation. And I love quarterback battles, and I love when coaches don't really like to tip their hand. But, I mean, come on, this is coach speak. We're not saying somebody is 1, 2, or 3. This is Brian Flores regarding the quarterback situation. It's still a competition. Obviously, Fitz has played very well. They've all played well in spurts, and we've all made mistakes. We've still got a few days here. I think we like where all three of them are. We'll continue to leave that in a competition moving forward. So here are the three quarterbacks. And Fitzpatrick is the QB1. Two is listed as the QB2, and Josh Rosen is listed as the quarterback three. And I am a strong believer heading into week one Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be that starting quarterback because there's no reason why it should be Josh Rosen. And if they're taking it slow and if they're doing the right things with Tua, there's no reason to throw him out there in the fire right away. However, if uh, we are talking about the quarterback situation, and this has been a topic for, well, basically six months now, who do you think, okay, starts more games in 2020? I want you to type F for Ryan Fitzpatrick, type T for Tua, or type R for Josh Rosen. Let's now talk about two of the receivers that you're looking at here on uh, screen. We're going to stick with the top two dudes, Devontae Parker, Preston Wilson. And I saw some pretty interesting articles out there, and we'll get to some of these in just a second. But before I tell you some predictions by the huddle on Parker, on Preston Williams, I do want to hit you with this deal one more time that we got going on with our sponsor. Make sure you go out and support Manscaped. Without Manscaped, guess what? This video that you're watching it's not possible. So as much as you love the Dolphins, you need to start loving Manscaped too because go support our sponsors. We can make more videos. But they're also hooking you up with the best deal on the internet. If you use code DOLPHINS at manscaped.com, you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the perfect package, which comes in the Lawnmower 3.0, my favorite product. Also, really starting to love the ball toner. It's like cologne for your nuts. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Ball deodorant as well. I know it's really hot and sweaty down there in Miami. Your balls, it's their slogan. They will thank you when you use these products. Plus, I mean, come on. You're also getting thrown in a comfortable player of boxers and a traveling kit. You're not going to find a better deal out there. Manscaped.com. Use code DOLPHIN to check out. I will put that link in the comments and the description. If you don't take advantage of the deal, it's your fault, not mine. All right, let's get in now to Devontae Parker here. The huddle which I actually do think the huddle is pretty accurate. They did some fantasy football rankings, and I saw a lot of people on uh, Miami Twitter and Miami Instagram freaking out over their reaction to Devontae Parker. They had him projected 
at 930 yards and seven touchdowns. And if you would have given Devontae Parker that projection going into 2019, you're like, man, that's awesome. But he is coming off an absolutely sensational year, career year, where he was top five in the NFL in receiving yards and tied for ninth with most receiving touchdowns. So anytime you have a player who is coming off 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, and you're projecting him for basically 300 yards less than that and two touchdowns less than that, people are going to get upset. And as much as I like Devontae Parker when he first came out of college, when he first came out of Louisville, he's definitely had his ups and downs. But he did show some flashes last year of why he was drafted as high as he was. So what I want you to do right now is take a guess, okay? Look into your crystal ball. Look at the numbers. And the one thing that I wish the huddle would have done was give target projections because when I look at receivers, I look at targets because you can project targets. It's a lot easier than project yards, especially receptions as well. So how many receptions and how many yards for Devontae Parker in 2020? Scroll on down and let me know. The other player that the huddle broke down was Preston Williams. And this was a pretty interesting one for me because last season before his ACL injury in November, he was showing a lot of promise. And if you're this Miami team, you got to feel pretty good about having two solid young receivers in Parker and now a sophomore season out of Preston Williams. They projected him for 700 yards and five touchdowns. So when you look at what he did last year, 428 yards and three touchdowns, remember he did get injured. All reports out of camp right now are that he's looking good. The six foot five receiver is building good chemistry. It's going to be, I think, the real issue here for these players is going to be fits to a uh, can you really build chemistry with two quarterbacks? Well, that's something that we're only going to have to find out. So I made you predict Devontae Parker's stat line. What kind of man would I be? What kind of host would I be if I wouldn't also make you predict Preston Williams' stat line? So what I want you to do, think about what you predicted for Parker. I want you to do the exact same thing now for Williams' receptions and yards for this upcoming season. My last story here I'll talk about is Bleacher Report. They released their updated NFL power rankings and they base these on Super Bowl odds and as you can see at the, vo the bottom note there the Dolphins right now plus 8,000 Super Bowl odds and they came in ranked number 24 and I know a lot of y'all are going to be pretty upset that Bleach Report had them ranked as a bottom 10 team and you know maybe it's deserving maybe it's not we'll get to it in just a second but I also want to show you where they rank the rest of the AFC East at the Buffalo Bills they came in at number 13 so the fact that not a single team from this division made in the top 12 that was pretty interesting to me the buffalo bills were are a little bit higher at least in my personal power rankings at number 19 was the new england patriots yes you have cam newton the defense should be better or should be solid they did lose a lot of pieces there but 19 pretty interesting 24 the miami dolphins and then at number 28 was the new york jets <laughs> And if I'm being honest with you, I think the New York Jets at 28 might be a little bit too high. I don't think it's going to be a very good year for them whatsoever. So we did the power rankings, but then also they had the Super Bowl odds, plus 2,500 for the Bills, 6,000 for the Patriots, and then 8,000 for the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets. If y'all are feeling confident, if you want to go put a bet on, hit me up on IG. I can give you the link where you guys can make that bet. So be honest with me. If you made it this far in the video, I guess that means that we're doing something right here, right? Maybe you could drop a like for us. But I want you to do is be honest with yourself. If you made power rankings, where would you rank the Miami Dolphins in your rankings? Would you put them at 24? Would you have them in the top 15? I'm going to be very curious about this question because for those of you that answered it, that did mean that you watched to the very end, and I appreciate that. So make sure before you go, hit that sub button and let me know where you're ranking the Dolphins.